if we need it. So I'll, I'll pass that along. I wish pending surgery. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We are here to start our jobs committee this Friday, March 12th, 2021. May I please have roll call? Okay. Weber? Here. Davist? Iqbal? Iqbal present. Kopi? Kopi's present. Lewis? Molina? Molina present. Mr. Ford? Present. Okay. Davist here. Missed the okay. mute button. All right. Thank you. <laughs> I have a motion to approve the minutes from uh, February 19th, 2021. Weber will move. Molina seconds. We got a motion and a second. Uh, please have roll call. Davis. Oh. Davis, yes. Iqbal. Iqbal, yes. Obi. Lewis. Lewis, yes. Obi, yes. Thank Obi, you. yes. Molina. Molina, yes. Weber. Yes. Ford. Yes. All right. I guess we may have who's online for our uh, um, workforce development division. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is Scott Berger. I've got um, uh, Maria Gonzalez with me uh, to present the financial report for our office. And then following Maria's remarks, I do want to uh, give the committee a brief update. Maria, are you there? I am. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good morning. In your packet, you will find your um, financial reports for um, workforce development, the two WIOA grants that we currently have running. Um, with the WIOA 19 grant, we are still working through the, um, the funds that were um, reallocated for COVID expenses. Um, we still have about 200000 on that. Um, we have to look at it closely to ensure that we are going to spend it. If not, then uh, modification will need to be done to put the monies back into the various funding streams. Um, we have until June 30th to address that and fully spend that grant down. On page seven of your packet starts the WIOA 20 expenditure report. Um, as you know, we continue to maintain the 50% benchmark for training. We are at 54. Um, we are running a little low on how we should be tracking, we should be tracking towards the 80% for June 30th. Um, we should be at 47% obligated and spent through the end of January and adult and dislocated just run a little shy, but it's slowly working its way up. Um, program and us in fiscal, we continue to monitor this closely to ensure that we will hit our numbers by the end of June. It looks like we are close to finalizing um, the grant agreement for the trade grant, so that should be coming forth and we will be able to start drawing the funds and a report will start coming through once that executed grant agreement comes my way. And we still haven't seen anything regarding the statewide rapid response report. Um, any questions? Any questions? All right, seeing none. Chairman, uh, Chairman Ford, I would like to. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, Scott. Marks. Go ahead. I'm sorry, you did say yeah, that. Yeah, so, um, you know, to pick up on Maria's um, report to you regarding our obligations, I just want to make the committee aware that um, every WIOA grant that we receive has a 24 month lifespan. And one thing that the State Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity look for is for us to achieve an obligation uh, benchmark of 80% after the first 12 months of that grant. Basically, the obligation benchmark is an indicator of our due diligence to move forward and implement the programming that they funded. So I wanna let the committee know that we currently have four requests for proposals open and on the street. Um, RFPs result ultimately in contracts and contracts represent obligations. So when we talk about obligations, what we're talking about are written commitments uh, to purchase services, goods, and um, 
uh, uh, training for the, for the job seeker community. Uh, so this is a key element of our plan to meet the obligation benchmark that Maria mentioned. Um, specifically, we're procuring services in the area of outreach and training, uh, youth service supportive elements. Uh, we're looking to purchase a customer relationship management or CRM system, as well as some marketing and communication services. Uh, we expect proposals to be submitted on the 22nd, which is a week from Monday, and we'll be seeking approval from our Workforce Development Board in April and coming back to the full county board in May uh, with a request to execute contracts. Those contracts, as I said, will be obligations that we're projecting will put us beyond the 80% benchmark and more than satisfy that requirement. So I wanted to provide that kind of background for you so you're aware that we're, we're taking steps to uh, meet the requirements of our program. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Just could you repeat when those uh, contracts are due in again? Our proposals are due on Monday, the 22nd. That's a week from Monday. Okay. okay. All right. Any other questions? Seeing none, we'll move on, move on to the uh, jobs committee uh, presentations. Is Judy, there she is. Good, Good morning. morning. How are you doing today? Oh, just fine. How are you? I'm great. May I share my screen? Definitely. Can everyone see? Oh. Yes, yes. It's some it's someone it's somewhat difficult when you have two screens. So I apologize. Take your time. Can now everyone see my screen? The presentation. No, it has not popped back up. Okay. Well, so I apologize. And for in the interest of time, I'm thank you so much, uh, Ron Ford, for inviting me to speak today. Uh, special thanks to Mark Van Kirkhoff and, um, and Chris Toth for helping me um, with and supporting all of our efforts. So I'm Judy. Judy Huh? I mean, just real quick. So our technician here does have your slides. Yes. So uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see them, that you can help guide yeah, I can see them. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chris, <laughs> as always. Uh, I'm Judy Dawson. I'm Director of Administration for the Kane County Sheriff's Office. I joined the team in December of 2018, and I will share my presentation with you today in two sections, before COVID and after COVID. Before COVID, uh, my job was to help our detainees receive training get, so they could get jobs and not return to jail. My team consists of Corey Dixon, our senior director, Bill Woods, who 
reaches out and coordinates all of our initiatives and programs, and Winfred Cooper, who leads the uh, Release Detainee Contact Initiative. So our focus is employment, education, and entrepreneurship. Next. Valentine's Day 2019. This is how I spent it. We had our first forklift driver training and, and all 11 gentlemen who participated in it received certification. And we connected them with employment. They had multiple job offers. And we also, next slide please, offered it to our ladies. The gentleman you see on the right smiling is Joseph Garcia. He agreed to come to our uh, jail and train detainees on not only forklift, but OSHA 10. Next. You were talking about WIOA programs, Manufacturing Careers Internship Program for individuals 18 to 24. It's a three month program. The, it teaches job skills and then places these individuals in pl paid internships for two months. At the end of the two month uh, paid internship, at no cost to the employer, they have the opportunity to continue working for the manufacturer. Typically, MCIP averages about a 70% success rate. With our folks who were released, they have a 100% success rate. Next. That's our class, MCIP. You see Eddie Perez teaching the course. Next. We also had the Painters Union come in, do a, a brief training class to give our detainees another option for employment. Next. In August of 2019, Wabanzi Community College began our GED program. Once our detainees are released, they can continue the program at Wabonzi or Elgin, whichever one is closer to where they're living. Next. We also have hiring events. It's great to have training, but our folks need jobs. And as you can see some familiar faces, you have uh, Eddie Perez on the far left and Rand Haas on the far right with MCIP on the left we have from the Illinois Department of Employment Security, Bruce Olson and Kathy Gilmore with Valley Industrial Association. Next. We conducted interviews. Employers came down in the jail and interviewed our detainees prior to release. That allowed them to, when they, were, when they left jail, go directly for their drug screening and often begin their jobs within 72 hours of release. That's a game changer because I know I have started a new job and wondered when the first paycheck would hit my account. Can you imagine how long that stretches if you've been in jail several months? Next. We have other hiring events. We partnered with Valley Industrial Association and we had a manufacturing day hiring event, not only for our detainees, but for the entire community. Next. We, we had an, a job fair in 2019 at East Aurora High School. We hosted it for the young people under 17 to help them find part-time jobs and summer jobs and the seniors who are graduating full-time jobs. Next. Our last event, which was a year ago yesterday, which seems like, you know, ages ago, we also promoted uh, and hosted the job fair at West Aurora High School. Next. In addition to finding a job, Many of our detainees need a side, what we call that side hustle, because they have low paying jobs. Many of them cannot find jobs, but they can start their own businesses. The lovely Terry Simmons is conducting a class. We help them find a business that they're passionate about. 
build a business plan and next. We also have a business plan pitch competition. We also partner with Harriet Parker with Wabonzi Community College's Small Business Development Center. You see her in the photo. And the other folks in the photo are bankers and funders who better to give feedback and encourage our detainees on their business plans. Terry Simmons also conducts uh, a session with our detainees to help them with their resume writing and interviewing skills. Next. We also we have an internship program led by Corey Dixon and our interns, the majority come from Aurora University. They're master's students working on their master's in forensic um, social work. We also have interns from Judson and Loyola and even Kishwaukee Community College. Next. Our interns focus on moral recognition training. And, and that is a therapy program that is a cognitive 12 step program to help them slow down their thinking so they make better decisions. And we hope one of the better decisions that they make is not returning to jail. Next. That's a graduate, one of our graduating classes of moral recognition training. Next. We also started a vegetable garden with the help of the Geneva Garden Club. And next, the vegetables were donated to area food pantries and homeless shelters. Next. Some of our accomplishments in 2019 included uh, many folks receiving training, enrolling in GED, and we had seven hiring events. Next. Now during COVID. Next. We had to go virtual with our hiring events, and they, but they still served everyone in the community and our detainees. Next. We started in November a free job and community resource board. Sheriff Ron Hain serves all of the citizens in Kane County. Kane County, like many other counties throughout the United States in 2020, experienced record unemployment. Our job board is different because all of our jobs are background friendly. You don't have to have a background to use it, but all of the jobs are background friendly. We partnered with Rise Kits, so not only our employers are on our job board, but Rise Kits scrubbed indeed for all of the background friendly jobs. You hear resource board. This resource board helps connect individuals with what I call the barriers to employment, transportation, childcare, and all an individual has to do is log on and give us their contact information. We have volunteers who are HR professionals who will help them with their resumes and navigate the job board. Next. Some of our accomplishments, you know, we also um, so since 2019 have focused outside of our our jail into the community. So in April, August of last year, we began offering our OSHA and forklift driver training classes to individuals in the community. Next. With that being said, I mentioned Joseph Garcia, who agreed to come down and into our jail and train our, our folks. We've worked together to find grants uh, to help support these efforts because no taxpayer dollars have been used to train our detainees on forklift driving and or uh, OSHA training. With that being said, we found a benefactor who has agreed to pay for all of our students in these classes. Last year, someone in the community had to pay $150 for the classes. We did have to make some exceptions for people who were unable to pay. So now the classes are just $25 and that includes lunch. 
So if you know of anyone or if you know of an organization, a manufacturer or any employer who needs to train their people, we're here to help. So our next forklift driver, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, our next OSHA 10 class is March 30th. And next, our next forklift class is April 30th. So please go to canesheriff.com and there are videos and flyers and just let everyone know that this is this wonderful opportunity is available. Next. We talked about the business plan pitch competition and building business plans where our detainees are incarcerated. But the jeopardy question is what happens once they're released? They can continue with the Women's Business Center in Aurora or with Harriet Parker at Wabanzi Small Business Development Center. But we've also partnered with Defy Ventures. They have an entrepreneurial boot camp. It's virtual, but at the end of the, of the boot camp, every graduate receives a laptop and enters a program where they can receive up to $10,000 in grant money to start their business. Defy Ventures works with these individuals who must have been incarcerated at one time in order to qualify with their businesses for as long as they want this support. Next. In 2021 thus far, we have had three individuals certified as forklift drivers, four at OSHA 10. We're working with uh, our, our partners at Wabanzi and Many of these numbers are a bit low because of COVID, we haven't been able to fully open up our programming. Next. Does, any, does um, anyone have any questions? But what I would like to ask is if anyone knows of um, anyone who would like to volunteer and help us with our, in our detainees once they're released or any individual in Kane County that needs help with their resume, if they're career services folks or HR professionals, we appreciate that. And promote our hiring events and our job board. And uh, thank you very much. Next. Um, hey, Judy, this is Anita yes. Lewis. I have a, uh, a comment, not a question. Okay. First of all, it's great to see you. <laughs> see you. I can't see you. No, or hear you at least you. in my case. Hey, I, I just wanted to let you know that I have a 21-year-old grandson who um, has been through our system, and I made him go on um, the Rise Kit and sign up, and it's a fantastic job site. Okay. And I also, in some of my work in the community, people are like, well, where do we go if we you know, have a record and we need to get hired? And I've been sending everybody to the King County Sheriff's site. And the first thing they say to me is, really, you're sending us to the King County, you know, because, sorry, not everybody likes the sheriff as much as we do. And when you say, I, you know, you need to go to the sheriff's site and this is amazing stuff. And then they do and they call me back and they're like, wow, that's cool. Um, so I, I just want to thank you and, and Ron for just the work you do in our, in, in our community, not just the jail. But the fact that you understand, you know, that these are people that have made bad decisions and we really need to get them back in society and working. And even after a few years, not in the system, they still need help. So you guys are awesome and it, it is an excellent site. Thank you. And that's all. All right. Any, um, any other questions or comments? Weber? Judy, thank you for the presentation. It's. Uh, it I, I've been noticing um, how active uh, the whole sheriff's department has been with uh, helping assist with, with training and, and education classes and stuff like that. It's been really, really excellent. How much or, or how, how do you guys interact with the uh, workforce development? Is, is there scenarios where the next level of training, they're able to assist with, um, with any of the, uh, the individuals? I have not been able to engage with them as, uh, so f thus far, so I'm very interested. Okay, thank you. That's why I asked. Go ahead. 
Sorry about that. First of all, Judy, thank you very much for joining us today. This is Chris. Um, you, you know, anyone who knows Judy, it's her time is very valuable because she's always busy. So um, I just had one quick question to follow up with something. Have you gotten any feedback from any of the employers or manufacturers that your um, returning citizens have been employed at just to talk about, um, you know, maybe their surprise or, you know, what their experience have been with working with the trained returning citizens? Thank you for that question, Chris, and thank you for being, uh, you know, always there for us. Yes, we are in constant communication with them because as this evolves, the more communication, the better. From uh, one of the biggest challenges we had was not getting them the, jo the job or having them show up, but none of them could fill out the benefits, you know, forms because they never were offered benefits. There are some employers who came in Kane County that source all of their new employees from us. Our employees don't have the options that normal cit regular citizens have. So once they have the opportunity, their retention rate is much higher than the average new employee. Because if you treat them well, they want to stay. Many of them get promoted and also, you know, they don't have as many options and they appreciate someone giving them the opportunity. Awesome, thank you. I see uh, our sheriff, Ron Hain is online. I, I won't give him an opportunity to talk if he needs to. Thank you, Chairman Ford, and thanks for inviting Judy. Uh, I think uh, people know that, especially if you attend the Judicial Public Safety committee meetings know that I like to put my employees face first because they're the ones that are doing the job. Um, I'm just behind them and I'm kind of the, the brain piece and the, and the mindset maker uh, of how I want them to proceed. And Judy Dawson is the icon of that. So I brought her in with a blank canvas. She hit the ground running and it's just done an amazing job as you guys can see. And this is all her. This is her entire thought process that you see in Ballot Pierce. So uh, I couldn't be more proud of the work her and her team have done. And this is the future of, of criminal justice, folks. This is, uh, you know, as we talk about the police reform bill, um, the, the need for jobs and the need to place people into employment is going to be an incredibly key component going forward. Uh, the state's attorney and I have developed a new program where after successful completion in our recovery pod, uh, people are being released. We have our first gentleman potentially coming on March 26. Of course, this is all decided by by a judge at the end of the day. But March 26 is his court date. He's <clears throat> currently facing, if he is convicted um, in the historic annals of the criminal justice system, if he's convicted, he's facing natural life in prison just based on the weight of drugs that he dealt back in the 90s. Uh, and, and that compiled with his current uh, drug that he was in possession of when he uh, caught the case that he's currently in the Kane County Jail for. So we've taken a guy who's been with us for two years, facing natural life, uh, dumped a, a bunch of reform into him, and he's going to walk out with an ankle bracelet, go straight into a job, and, and continue with his drug counseling. And if he performs successfully for six to nine months, he's going to get a probationable charge. So he's going to go from looking at the spending the rest of his life in jail to probation. Um, and this is the direction we have to head in. And, and Judy in parallel with this is going to be a key component, component of modern criminal justice and Kane County is, is setting the trend for it. So again, couldn't be more proud. Thank you, Judy. Thanks, Ron. I, I know all, any other questions for, I know that uh, Judy, you and I talked about the, a new venture that you've been working on and I didn't know whether or not you felt comfortable presenting it today or talking about it today, but I do leave the table open for that. Until it's that. signed, I don't like uh, putting it out there. So until okay. we have the agreement inked, All but right. and, so and we'll, I am open to any uh, suggestions for programs because we don't know what will resonate with each individual. So, you know, any suggestions are, are, are welcome. All right, sounds good. We really appreciate you being here today in the presentation and really proud of what's happening uh, in our sheriff department. This is the a new direction that is positive for uh, for Kane County to see people getting a chance to be on the right path. Anything else? 
Mr. Ford, this is Deborah Allen. I'm just sitting in on your meeting. Can Go I ahead, make Deborah. a comment? Go ahead. I just, I just wanted to say that this is an extension of a direction that I'm really proud Kane County wants to go in. It takes a lot of resources and a lot of energy and money to try and help people get back into the community. But this is how it's done. It's, it's done a person at a time. Um, someone like Judy, somebody like the sheriff saying, you know, let's, let's find a path for you. What are you interested in? What are your skills? How can we help you? And it's, you know, it's the lowest and slowest way to go, but you get such great results from it. So thanks for the individual effort, uh, Sheriff Hain, for having confidence and going in this direction, like with our drug court and our mental health court and our veterans court. And Judy, for you personally being on the front line, this is just great stuff. Um, we're cheering and we'll try and provide as much resources as we can. Thank you. Well, I, I appreciate you. Thank you. All right. Anything else? Well, Judy would like to say thank you. Thank you, Ron, for the other Ron. Uh, thank you, uh, <laughs> Chairman Ford, for all of your support over the years as well. Uh, you're welcome. Okay. All right. Next, we have our presentation on our uh, matching grants program. Ooh, it's hard to see. Uh, well, today I just wanted to um, talk a little bit about our export grant program now that it's winding down. Um, as Mark has mentioned in previous months, the Chicago Regional Growth Corporation is no longer, which means um, the programs that they, we had partnered with are no longer uh, active as well. Um, so just a little bit of history on the Metro Chicago Exports Grant Program. Um, that launched in 2015 with funding from J.P. Morgan and Chase. It was uh, grants of up to $5,000 for businesses throughout Northeastern Illinois to grow international trade specifically through exports. Um, and the program lasted from 2015 to 2020. Next slide. We created the matching grants program um, as part of the jobs committee in 2015 to incentivize King County businesses to apply. When the first round of grants happened, um, King County only had two businesses apply. Um, most of the other counties had only one or two as well. So um, the jobs co-chairs and Mark Van Kirkhoff uh, got together to try and find ways to incentivize um, businesses in our county to um, apply. So we came up with the matching grant program, which was an additional $5,000 match um, from King County for any company that was awarded through MCE. Um, after the program ended at five years, Kane County had the second highest number of grants outside of the city of Chicago compared to all the seven collar counties. Um, we also used the motto, the, the model to um, join other regional programs like the IMEC Manufacturing Innovation Voucher and the ADME program. And what was great was it was a great setup so we could quickly respond to programs that were out there so we could add funds to incentivize our manufacturers um, or other businesses to join in on those programs. Next slide. Um, just to show the, the number of companies that won our grants throughout the years, um, our best years were 2015 and 2017 when the program was uh, really being highlighted. Um, as it kind of winded down and other programs were added to MCE's plate, they kind of spread it out. So over the five years, we had 26 grants awarded um, and they were awarded to 16 separate companies, which next slide. This is the list of uh, companies that won um, manufacturing, or excuse me, export matching grants to the county over the years. Um, a, couple a couple highlights is one is I had the pleasure of touring every single one of these uh, manufacturing floors. So it was great to see what products were being made here in Kane County. Um, uh, In-Flight Entertainment Products of Carpentersville was a company that won it every single year. They made, in, um, they refurbished and created uh, entertainment consoles for flights uh, and they sold their products internationally. Um, they also had customized LED lights that throughout the program they had started and were producing and selling by the time the program ended. Um, that just extended the life of plane lights by about 10 to 15 fold. Um, some other companies, you know, Jackpoint Jack Stands was a unique car stand. Microtrace was forensic 
science exporting. Um, and it's just, it was great to see all of the different manufacturing uh, products throughout the county. Um, next slide. And it's hard to see on here, but um, it's just a comparison of Kane County to the other counties in terms of how many respondents and how many uh, awards and jobs created compared to the other counties. Um, this is only from 2015 through 2017, which the data was shared for us. But it just shows that when we incentivized our companies to apply to uh, get matching export I, grants. Did we get paid for having this much fun? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I love it. The, the, um, the, when, sorry, I lost my thought. When, when we incentivized it, not only did we have an opportunity to create more jobs, but we got more companies interested in the program. And when the program did end, um, I think the total export sales, it was close to 100 million with almost 100 jobs created with the investment of $130,000 from the county and $130,000 from Metro Chicago. So I'll let people decide if that's a good investment from their perspective. But for mine, uh, it was a really beneficial program. Um, one of the reasons I wanted to share that with you today is because moving forward, we wanna keep in mind um, if we see or are aware of programs that are local or regional that we can piggyback on, and we would like to continue to find programs that we can support or have a matching program similar so that way we can continue to help grow and incentivize businesses to stay in Kane County. Um, so one of the things I always like to ask is if you, you know, if, if a board member ever comes across a program or a grant program that's in the state of Illinois or in the region that they see that is interest, please share it with me because we're always looking for new opportunities that we can help um, incentivize rather than being the direct leader because uh, Mark and I just don't have the bandwidth to really have a program on our own, but we've had a lot of success in supporting uh, other grant programs in, in growing in the Kane County uh, region. So with that, I just, um, it was just a quick share, but if anyone has any questions or comments, I'd, I'd love, to, love to help out. All right, any questions or comments or Chris? I do, sir. Go ahead. Tom Copey. Thank you, Ms. Ford. Um, I, I did reach out in the past uh, six weeks to a company that um, manufactures and designs uh, printed circuit boards. And essentially a solar panel is a giant printed circuit board. Mm -hmm. And uh, we discussed the idea of, of uh, converting a portion of his production into printed circuit boards. Uh, unfortunately, they're older uh, people that own the company and they, they sort of didn't want to invest in long-term projects like that. But a company like that could bring a very, very valuable um, industry into our county. And the bottom line simply was they could not amort they did not have enough time to amortize uh, a loan in a process uh, that far out, you know. So if, uh, if, again, to chime in, if anybody could come in, come up with uh, some source or um, an incentive, uh, we could reach out and have a uh, solar panel company right in our backyard. Thank you. All right. Any other comments, questions? I uh, just want to, um, we'll just move on to uh, staff updates. Thank you. Uh, just a couple quick staff updates. Um, no unemployment number update for this month. Uh, for some reason, the Federal Reserve has not updated their numbers since December. Um, at the last meeting, the chairman asked me to uh, try and find the actual unemployment number. I have done a lot of research on this and I haven't come up with the actual, but um, the closest range I've come down to doing the math is you can expect between 11.3 to 12.5%, depending on your sources of an actual unemployment. And what that means is it takes into account not only those who are unemployed and looking for jobs, but those who are underemployed 
and those who are unemployed and are not actively seeking jobs. Um, it's, it, it's, again, it's, it's, a lot of it's just numbers on paper. We, I, I don't like to talk about people as numbers as often. And when we talk about programs like Judy's, it's a great way of converting numbers into people and getting them jobs. But again, it's just something I wanted to share. Um, the other thing was back in the end of uh, February, I did attend uh, the 2021 Economic Pulse hosted by the Aurora Chamber, um, which was uh, the hiring lab from Indeed, which Judy mentioned when she uh, talked about the RISE kit. And I just wanted to give a, a couple quick points. Um, the top three reasons why the unemployed aren't looking for jobs, and there is a lot of reluctancy, is caregiving and family duties, um, caution for the job market, and this one surprised me the most is there are still a lot of people who have an expectation of returning to their old job or career once the pandemic subsides, which is, is a challenge for um, the job market right now because I think that might be keeping the numbers a little bit high. But the, conversely, why aren't, according to their data, why uh, employers aren't looking for new workers is they're just minimizing risk in the bad economy. And with the challenge of remote business being done, the, there's a, a huge lag in onboarding new employees during you know, the remote period, especially as it continues to be more of a common practice. It's, it's just really hard for businesses to bring someone in and, and start them you know, remotely. Um, in terms of the job market, the, the, the gains have been coming in pharmaceutical, construction, and driving, and trucking. And the losses have really come in the services, arts, entertainment, and tourism, uh, food, and, and beauty. Um, the stats show that largely more densely populated areas are rebounding much slower and, expend, and expect to rebound slower than less dense. So the suburbs, will, you'll see numbers go up faster in the suburbs, faster in the rural areas, faster than the big cities. Um, and lastly, in when human resources are looking at recruiting right now in this, this labor market, um, the big focus is on skills, quality, on the fighting the uneven recovery. And the big thing they talked about is the new challenge of dealing with people who have long unemployment gaps on their resumes, because that's something that a lot of hiring managers are starting to see. So there's a lot of challenges um, for hiring moving forward, but again, King County is very progressive in terms of finding its solutions with programs at the Sheriff's Office and the Workforce Development Board. Um, we're trying to address our needs locally. So I just like sharing the good news and, and the information. Um, but if anyone has any questions, I'd love to take those, but that's all I have for my report today. All right, anybody, anything else? All right, right before we get into um, new business, or, or I wanna go back to, um, the comments by uh, co-chairs. You had anything, Mr. Weber? Um, one of the things that, that I, I don't know if they're still on the phone, but uh, Scott Berger and Maria, I, I appreciate um, the, the, the updates that we've been getting with uh, the development board to make sure that um, our, uh, our numbers, our benchmarks are, are being hit so that if there is an issue, we can get ahead of it and make sure that uh, we stay in compliance. So if they're still on the phone, I, I appreciate the updates. Thank you. Uh, one thing I wanted to bring up is I have talked to a few uh, restaurant owners and trying to get their concerns how things will be turning around. And what was brought up to me uh, identically by the ones who I had a chance to talk to across the board is that uh, that training time that they need to bring in waitresses, uh, bartenders, uh, nuts, and, and that time trying to train them and have the funding for training because that time is lost financially. I don't know anything we can do with that, but also uh, finding just simple positions like busboys and even dishwashers. Um, some of them have more uh, of a, a mechanism may take a while to train to use the, the equipment. So, um, so, so those items are, are starting to, will be coming up. W whether or not we have something we can work with, the, with them on or come up with something, uh, I, I don't know. 
moving on, uh, do we have any new business? All right, seeing none, I don't think there's any public comments. Then I need a motion to replace the, um, the reports on file. Moving Adams, on. Move. All right, do I have a second? Second by Weber. Weber, we'll second. Okay. Do we need, we need a voter? Okay. Go ahead. Davis? Davis, yes. Iqbal? Iqbal, yes. Kobe? Lewis? Lewis, yes. Molina? Molina, yes. Ford? Yes. Weber? Yes. Thank you. All right. Um, moving on. I don't think we have any need for executive session. So a motion and a second to adjourn. Weber will motion to adjourn. Need a second. Eight ball seconds. Eight ball seconds. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.